How you guys doing? So I will uh, tell you where I left off on this. I have uh, added two extra holes here for the rail. And I've done that on both sides. I screwed up a bunch of times. Uh, on this side, the, the front, the very front one, there was a hole that was kind of slightly offset from this. So I had to close that on the TIG torch while it shut. And, uh, and I tapped these two. Then on this side, I tap these two. Messed up this hole, so deleted that hole and then did it again. And then finally got the holes all good. Um, I have removed all the paint on the top of this, so it's very metal. And I have the webcam sensor, as you can see over here. And over here, I have the laser. So, and with the two optical kinematic mounts, the 3D printed ones. So we got the laser over here, and everything's dialed in. Get the Allen key there. And then I put some legs on the bottom here so I could adjust the uh, angle. Because this uh, shelf is not really uh, horizontal with the horizon. And we are pumping almost 12 volts in there to get it to light up. So around 12 volts is what this green laser takes to uh, light up. And uh, yeah, we just got everything dialed in. And over here, all right, I've done some preliminary um, samples just to make sure everything is aligned. So what I've been going back and forth doing is taking this, put it in the front, see if it gets onto the sensor, yeah, blocking it. So I've got to make sure it's somewhere in the middle and you can see here, and do the same for the back. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get it perfect just because the uh, bolts on the bottom here, the height is uh, stopping me from getting it like totally dialed in. Uh, I could, but I would have to get these uh, legs taken out and put some shorter ones in there. Yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, so like we can see over here, the laser is hitting the more of the top of the sensor. This is as close as I can get it. But it doesn't really matter all too much because uh, in the tool here I have like raw and then flattened so when it's raw like it's gonna look like a uh, you're not gonna really see like the actual bumps and stuff it's just gonna be like a, a slope but when it's flattened I take all that out and we can just see like what, what it actually looks like. So let's do that right now. Also running the tool in Linux uh, instead of on um, Windows and on Windows I can, I have in the tool set up so I can go into the device settings of the webcam and adjust like the exposure and stuff. On Linux I can't do that. I don't know where you do that on Linux. So what I've been having to do is adjust the exposure by opening the garage and lighting, lighting a bit of light. So like if I shut this more, camera's gonna auto-expose, but uh, so does webcam. But I, I run into issues where the white area gets blown out too much. So adding a bit of ambient light seems to help. You see how the, uh, like if I open it a lot, you see how the, uh, the, uh, the top of it is kind of less rounded. If I turn off the, uh, I don't know why it's oscillating like that. It's kind of weird. If I turn off smoothing, you'll notice how it's more on the top there. It's kind of blown out. On the surface, I have previously taken all the high spots off, ground it all so it's nice and flat. And I have done the same to the rail. Any little burrs and stuff, they're all removed now, so everything is nice and smooth. That way, like, if I hit a bump or something, like, if I get a bump there, I might tweak this over in some direction or another, and, like, that'll skew the results. So, now everything's uh, nice and smooth. Should be better. So, what I'll do is I'll run through each bolt hole, and, uh, don't know how many I have, but I'll take uh, one sample per each. So over here, I'll leave it at 50 sub-samples, and I need to re-zero. So I'll re-zero that out. So there's my zero point. 
Uh, because the laser is now on the shelf uh, and not the drill press, it is much less susceptible to me walking around and uh, bumping around and stuff. So we'll take the first sample. And the graph will start to populate after three samples. So I'll move it forward a little bit. So samples are coming in. If I jump over to raw, you see what I mean? So the samples are coming in mostly like a you know, flat line like that, but once they're flattened with linear regression, we get this. So I'm gonna skip ahead and uh, show you what the results look like after I have taken all the samples. So that last one uh, crashed on me. I don't know why. The, uh, I don't, it might be the uh, cable itself. Um, I don't know if it would be more unstable in Linux, but uh, yeah, here's the results I got. So it looks like there's a bit of a high spot, whoop, a bit of a high spot in the middle, and uh, kind of bouncing around a little bit. So it's uh, 20, so the 30 positive, negative 25, so yeah, like what's that, 55 microns in total. So it's not a whole lot. Uh, yeah, like when I when I had the laser skewed and I had it on the drill press because like the drill press stand can move up and down. So it's before I had the legs on there. I was getting worse results, but I think that was due to an artifact with it being off center. But uh, now because things are all aligned, the results are I think closer to reality. Uh, so. Yeah, these tubes are, uh, they're about three millimeters thick. So like I could scrape this stuff in. I don't know what you guys, uh, I don't even know what you guys think. Epoxy leveling, I don't know if that's gonna work all too well just because of how thin it is. What I could do is, I, I have uh, Daikon blue. I could blue up the entire tube, the uh, entire surface and then go along with like a small little rotary tool and a little brace a bit and kind of work work out all the high spots that might be the best option to do and at least with that tube I don't think that's that's not a lot of material to remove so I could do that or I could just ignore it that's another option so I just finished the left side here's the results of that so it looks like we have a, a big jump at the very beginning here which is over here. That could be due to the welding. Like I did, uh, I did put a lot of heat in this area. So maybe, uh, maybe some deformation because of that. Might be. I don't know. That's a big chump. I'll have to double check that one. Uh, the end it kind of went up a bit too. Uh, but in the middle, it's like it's not. It's not terrible. So here's what the raw data looks like. That's what it is. And when it's flattened out, we get this. So we're looking at, like if we don't look at the uh, beginning here and a bit of the end, we're looking at like 65 microns, which is, you know, it's, it's within the range of the other side, which is between two and three thou. So yeah, I don't know if uh, it's even worth doing this because that's, that's over the whole span. And yeah, it's a DIY CNC machine, so. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. Should I uh, put more effort into trying to get this flatter or leave it as is? I'm kind of thinking I just put it back together and start using it. Let me know what you guys think. Talk to you guys later.